Hey guys, what's up? This is Conrad with GOG Boxing. Good to see you. You may be wondering, what is going on? He's wearing a coat. He's wearing glasses. He's not ready to work out. Well, it's because today's uh, vid is going to be a bit different. We're going to talk about the double-ended bag. Um, and the reason why, I've actually gotten a, a lot of response to this. That's the most popular vid I've ever done. And thank you guys for liking and subscribing. Uh, people have come back to me talking about uh, getting speed, using a double-ended bag. Um, it looks like a lot of people liked the, uh, the, the, the vid I did on the double-ended bag, just using it to get fast twitch. But I've also had a lot of comments, well, how do I string mine up? Why do these yours look different? Yours is different than mine, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Now, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the different ways to usefully use a double-ended bag when it comes to setting them up because i see a lot of vids and they make a good point on youtube that the double-ended bag come on dogs bye that they that the uh, double-ended bag is the most useful bag for especially for home workouts and in the gym uh, i do agree that it's incredibly useful i'm not sure if one is really more useful than the other but on the other hand um, i see them strung up and used and maybe not used to their full advantage uh, a lot of times they'll be kind of like this, really loose. Um, you'll see guys on them just kind of, I mean, stuff that's not necessarily going to get you anywhere in my opinion. We'll go through, We will. I will do more of a workout and show you some drills to use, but not in this video. In this video we're going to talk about how to hang it up, right? Which sounds simple, and it is kind of simple, but there are a few things that may make it easier for you. So, this is kind of just a medium-sized, typical double-ended bag, okay? And it's hung up the way a lot of guys are going to hang them up. Why do they hang them up that way? Because they go to the store, right? They go to the store, they buy it or they order on the internet, and they take the uh, cords that come with it. This bottom white cord came with this this one. I'm not really going to get into brands too much because uh, they matter and they don't matter. Uh, but this cord came with it. It's a pretty loose, wiggly cord. Um, this cord on top is is. Uh, actually not the original cord we'll talk about that um, if I use this cord on the top and this cord on the bottom it wouldn't work at all because the bag would be down by my knees somewhere because the roof is low okay so the first thing is we're gonna have to adjust things to make the roof low I mean to make the height the right height however getting straight to the point you don't want your double-ended bag generally speaking to be super boing gummy and loose it doesn't do anything for you Okay, um, the one of the it's some people call it a reflex bag or a reaction bag, and the reason is because you want to be able to use it to to get reactions and also to practice when you hit it to slip to move under it to do things with it to even to throw combos with it. Right? If you get something that's just bouncing all over the place, you're not going to throw combos with it because when you hit it, it's going to go about 20 feet out and it's come 20 feet back, and and you're not getting the response to it that you should get. So. Really, in the gyms of yesteryear, I mean, we're talking, I mean, look, I'm not a young, I'm not a young guy, but what I would typically see uh, years ago in the 80s and the way that I always used them and thought you should use them, and I still think you should use them, would have a lot more tension on them, really a lot more tension on them. And I'll give you an example. If you, if you want to see one with a super amount of tension, then you look at, I think there's like a Manny Pacquiao vid, vid out there where they've got it. I mean, it is so tight. The bag's like going, it's really tight. Now, what do we do then? And this, this, is, this sounds simple, but you're going to see it's going to get gradually a little bit more complicated. I'm going to show you different types of bags, okay, too. Well, the first thing is, you, if you get a double-ended bag, and it comes with these, these uh, types of um, elastic you know, bands or straps or cords or whatever, that's just the start. That's like, okay, you bought that, you can use it, but don't feel obliged to use it, right? What you want to do is put some more tension on this thing. Now, some people are going to have higher ceilings, some people are going to have lower ceilings. But the first thing, before you install it, you got to think about how, what are you going to install it to. So I'm going to show you, first of all, actually maybe I'll show you the ceiling first, okay? And then you think, well this is getting into minutiae, but no, it's important. So take a look at this. Okay, now you can probably see the way this is installed, the way I put it into the roof, okay? Hey, shh! 
the way I put it into the roof. You can probably see the way I put this is installed, the way I put it into the roof, okay? Now here's the important thing. It doesn't matter what kind of hook you use. What matters is that you have enough room to put in other cords. See, I can put one in like that. I can put one in like this, right? Oh, I think I can't, yeah, there you go. So I've got three in there already. Okay, now the same thing is gonna be true here. I've gotta have space to hook more than one cord in, right? The other thing is, look at, look at what I've used. See how that's flat to the ground? I don't have a hook standing up, right? The reason you don't want a hook standing up is because you're gonna forget it's there if you've installed this permanently into the ground and you're gonna walk in, you're gonna get your toe on it, you're gonna trip on it, you're gonna kill yourself. At least when it's flat, I'm less likely to do that. But you gotta have enough space. You can't have a little hook here. You gotta have a bigger hook, and even this one's a little bit narrow a lot of times for what I use, okay? Okay, so how are we gonna actually use this then? Now you see it's hung up right now. You see this little white cord on the bottom? That's the one that came with this bag. This is a pretty standard bag. This is a master's bag. I like it, it's okay. I'm not real into which bag is the greatest as long as they don't pop and hold air. Um, this is a different cable because if I put this long white cable which came with it, then this thing would be zooming all over the place. It would at about my hip level, right? Um, because the ceiling's lower. So the first thing is don't be bound by, the, by what you buy. Use the cords that you get when you buy it as just the basis for what you're gonna do. Now you'll see this top cable. This is the type of cable that this is the type of cable that you get like when you, you get you want to put baggage on top of your car, okay? I don't know what brand this is. Whoops. I got it like at a gas station. I'm always on lookout for cable sets, short ones, long ones, whatever, but it's elastic, it's strong and stiff. So what I'll do is I'll put I'll put one here and then I'll I'll put one there and then I'll grab a couple of others and the key is I'll grab a couple others and the key is when I have this type of bag is that I want I'm probably going to have more tension on top than I am on the bottom. Now I'll tell you why. Oop, I'll put this up. Okay. Again, see I've got enough room to put extra clips up here. Whoop. Okay, I hooked that up. And I'll hook this one down here. Okay, so now it's all hooked up. Now look, one thing which is kind of important. See the laces? You have them up high and not down low. I don't know why, it just seems to work better. Now, I've got three here and I've got two here. It brings it to, it's it's not very high. This is below my chin, it's a low level. You say, well, is that too low? Well, I mean, we're gonna get to the height in a minute. But this way, the way I, got, I have it now, it's stiff enough, it's got a little zing, but it's stiff enough that I can actually practice combos, right? I can actually practice combos. So if I just put on a glove, this may seem a little bit silly. I've got one glove on with my coat, but that's all right. Don't ever hit these things without gloves because you'll hit these things, you'll hit the, the attachments and you, you'll hurt your hand, you break a knuckle or something. But here I am. It's got enough zing in it now that it's coming back fast. That means if I'm in a, in a boxing stamp, I'm not just gonna be sitting here doing like this. I'm gonna get into a routine in a different vid, but if I'm in a stance, man, I can practice. I can see, I, I just did a jab and I slipped it and I came back, I can do combos. It's coming back to me fast enough that I can do something with it. Now to tell you the truth, a lot of times I've seen in, gym, in gyms and stuff where it's really tight. So these things are just, you can see that. I think there's like a Pacquiao video out there. I don't like it when it's quite that tight because I like to be able to practice. I've got my own feeling and rhythm for it. But too loose is not going to help you very much. Too loose is going to zing way out through all the place. You're not going to be able to throw combos. Your timing is going to be off. It's going to feel weird. You're going to wind up doing just kind of like that because there's nothing else to do with it, right? Now, what do you do? You want to adjust the height. You take a band off it's a little higher or you put a tighter shorter band up here then when you're in your stance it's a little bit higher it might be looser and zing all over the place but you've got to play with it and adjust it okay this is fine when it's a little higher because it's 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 fun to work with it's going to have a different feel with timing but it's still going to be fast enough that it's coming back to me that it's coming back to me now with regard to the reaction side of it Fill these bags up to where they're stiff, but they're not too stiff because 
you're you're hitting them a lot and you you can pop them okay so you got to find that happy medium where okay it's firm but it's not crazy if you over pump it you're going to pop it but why what's the difference when i have a little higher a little lower what the reason i always start out lower and a lot of times i start out with a little bit heavier gloves lower to warm up is because it makes me stay in a boxing stance and i'm also sitting down on my punches and i don't start just standing up and reaching like that after i get used to that then i go a little higher and sometimes i might go back down lower with a different tension okay with a different tension you want to you're going to want to make sure that you're keeping some form in there when you're when you're using these things right okay let's go to the next bag this is a mexican uh kind of a mexican style double ended bag we got the top and the bottom uh, i've heard a lot of guys they get frustrated with these things but the reason why they get frustrated is because they're just usually strung up way too loose these are not really made to hit and be really swinging way out there actually this one's loose right now i managed to bust one of my best bands uh, which i'm gonna have to replace but you can still see that i've got more cords on it. i've got more cords i would like this one even tighter like so it's really tight the reason is that when you hit it, when it's loose, it start, if it starts zinging around too much, then it is a little bit useless, okay? But when you have it tight, again, I'll jam a glove on. When you have it tight, okay, it actually is pretty cool. Um, these can be really useful because you can practice you can practice and the reason why i'm putting a glove on even right now is because one thing you don't do no matter what you sometimes you see guys they just have tape on their hands they work on the double-ended bag and i guarantee you if you do that or if you do it without anything eventually you will hit this part of the bag you will hit the actual attachments and you can bust a knuckle you can bust your finger you bust a knuckle you really got a problem like if you want to keep boxing but these are great because when you're hitting them you can practice high lows you can even hit in the middle because then it doesn't move very much so it's a little bit it's a little bit like you know a body punch but you can practice high lows you can practice combinations and then come down to hit body punches they're really pretty cool but they don't work if they're too loose Okay, you got to screen them tight. Now I'm going to show you one other uh, type of, uh, hey, come on dogs, hey. I'm going to show you one other type of uh, bag, which is something that a lot of guys uh, are interested in using at home. And you might like this too. Okay, now this is a cool bag. And this is a bag that you might find that you really like for home use. Why? Because it doesn't have any air in it. It's, it's, it's stuffed with like cloth. It's small. It's really zingy. It's really zingy. Um, this one has actually no name. I looked for a while to find it, uh, but it's good for home use. Why? Because it's not loud. If I, I'll show you, oh, I put it on my, I got the right-handed glove, but all right. If, if you're hitting it, right, it's not loud at all. Um, these little bags can be great. The one thing about them though, when you have little bags, they're going to be really fast. And you do want some tension on these little bags with, with, that don't have a lot of air in them. Where you have to be careful is they tend to be really zingy. Okay, really zingy. Which means when you hit them, bam, you got to be careful because they'll come back and they can pop you in the eye. I, had, I did that to me once. I, I was trying a, a more complicated... Uh, uh combo on it and i pulled it off and i it was a four punch combo except i slacked off just like you might do in a boxing match and this thing flew back and got me right in the eye and a black eye and i had to tell my friends i got a black eye from working on a double-ended bag which is kind of silly okay now that's i've run through the different bags i hope i hope i've helped some of you because i know some of you were asking about installing them the only other stuff that i will add to this vid which partly I did because as you can see, it's cold, it's snowy, we got COVID. It's hard to do workout videos when you don't have a gym. People don't want to meet because of COVID and all that. But another thing is just, you know, some of these basic setting stuff up, people set stuff up and they get really frustrated and they say, I don't think double-ended bags or this kind of equipment or that kind of equipment work. And part of it is just that it's not installed in a way that's gonna help you. Now, the last things I'll add, make sure you have space around so you can really move around the bag and work this isn't the white trash gazebo is filled up with junk it's not my junk it's not my gazebo 
uh, so I have to kind of make do with what it is but make sure you have space make sure that you're setting it up in a way that's that's also safe be careful when you're putting the hooks on if you let go one can snap up hitting you in the face make sure the cables are in good shape if you're working on it and one breaks this thing will snap up and hit you in the face um, you have to you know use common sense use common sense but anyway I hope you like that like subscribe when we get a little bit better weather or maybe one day this these different mutations will go away when we get in the gym we'll do some other stuff uh, but thanks a lot and see you soon